So that's the kind of detail. Great. Um, okay. Cool. So, in the world of open source ecology, do we go with workshops? Do we try to organize an extreme build? Um, John, tell me your thoughts What's on what you think. Yeah. Just from an outside view, what would be most appropriate as we move forward? Can you can you distinguish for me the difference in your head between the the Canon clone crash build and an extreme build and a swarm build? Are they different? Can mm -hmm. we just clarify terms? Yes. Yeah, so so there are several options on the table of what OSC can do right now in terms of programming and revenue generation. The Canon clone, the meaning a highly replicable workshop that we can run on a regular basis, and that's from a kit house, kit house materials that we already did one workshop on, that we save the modules, so we would build it on site, and that's plainly an educational experience for two weeks. That's, that's how we ran it last time, it was two weeks. And each time we perhaps make some additions, maybe refinements and things like that, but it's, it's focused on education, there is no product outside of education. Yep. So that is a type of a swarm build because a lot of people are intended to participate. We'd like to have 24 people um, and, and ideally actually 48 people uh, for one of those events where then your, your workload is really light. You can focus on the education. There's, it's literally like if there's 48 wall modules in a house, each person has to build one <laughs> in some way. So it's, it's much lighter work. So it is a type of a swarm build, but then a build for a real client. We can use the same techniques to do a, a build on a site for a person that's actually paying to get the house. Um, two ways to do it. One is actually to run a workshop around it, an immersion education workshop around that. Uh, so that would be the concept of the swarm build there. Or we, we could find a client and we build, not, not in terms of any public workshop, but just getting a crew of people together. So that's, does that explain it all? Yeah, one second, I'm just capturing. Yeah. Okay. So the let me let me read this back to you. Option one, Canon clone. This is materials that you have on site, and this is a uh, rehearsed, structured mm -hmm. process from start to end that is focused on education. Mm -hmm. Option two, build for real client, incorporating education as a immersion workshop. Option three, build for a client, assemble a crew based on your needs. To mm -hmm. produce the product, not on education. Is that fair? Yeah, that's right. Though two and three can have an element of the education if we work that out, how to do that properly. So, for example, ideally, I would like to see the apprenticeship program where we are doing real builds as part of the training. Why not? That will be the best way, the quickest way you can learn. You're interfacing with a client, you're seeing a real product come out. So options two and three ideally would be linked to the apprenticeship program that we create, right? Or it could be a, a triple thing where it's apprenticeship, client, and public. Now the public would be that we advertise this, learn how to build this house in two weeks. Um, your dream home that's a small starter home of a thousand square feet for a hundred K so so those three uh, I think eventually I'd like I'd love to run some of these at least and there could be different contexts under which you run them from actual charitable like literally getting a bunch of people from a block and we're re revitalizing this neighborhood right here where the say for example there would still be a client we were actually building a real house say the city even bought a land as part of their affordable housing program things like that so you can have creative mixes of, of those and we're on two and three we're, we're we'd like to evolve to the highest level of integration there with those three elements in one and for right now uh, do what we can execute and this is why once again the open source nature of this let's get more people around the table so we can actually execute and have the bodies and have the planning and all that to make it re a reality. My gut is start with Canon Clone mm -hmm. and do one or two of those before we make a decision on what the next step is. Because you, you, the progression from Canon Clone to build for real client, I think, is the biggest 
uh, hurdle yeah. that we need to, to cross right now. Yeah. And I think it's a great intermediate step. So that, that's that's yeah. my instinct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, inter, you know, as I, in my opinion, as we shoot towards solving housing for real people mm-hmm. in cities, uh, as as that trajectory goes up, so does the need for credibility. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, credibility, and that comes from amazing results. You know, we got to do do well, right. and that's where the open source could shine. It's that's that's how I see the the kind of constant improvement. We have to build in that feedback loop into the whole process. Yeah, everyone wins. Right. <clears throat> okay. So, given a Canon clone, you already have the materials on site. You have you've done some version of it before. Yeah, maybe we should start talking about how what what needs to happen before you bring people on site to do that next. Well, mm, in a in the least implementation, there would be you got notes. Is that um? You want to take some notes in the? Yeah, I'm on slide uh, ten. Slide ten. All right. So what are the elements? There's um <coughs> curriculum. There's a event posting. There's like regarding logistics. I mean, we can tell people like we've got Hab Lab here, but I, I think in order to facilitate things and and get ourselves out of the pickle of promising that we have a you know good accommodations and logistics worked out, I would go to the point like for our sake to prevent any kind of complaints. It's like we've got Hab Lab. It's got a kitchen there, um, but we're not even offering. It. It's like get a hotel in town. But if you wanna, if you wanna use our facilities, you're welcome to, and that would <clears throat> reduce your cost. Because um, the, the thing here was like we tried to get a cook for the the summer acts. We couldn't, and because someone backed out, and then it's really hard to find somebody. And then with not enough people uh, signing up, it's also it was hard to justify it financially as well. Uh, for the latter parts of the summer acts. So <coughs> logistics, Hab Lab, uh, there's a, the kitchen there is, I mean, it's very basics, um, but we can, if we don't do any work on logistics, because the promise last time was, which never materialized, was to do an out, outdoor kitchen and bathroom additional facilities, which, because not, not enough people showed up, we were counting like for 48 people, but only like 24 people showed up, uh, signed up, so uh, that never got built, but we can go without that. So, so that's that. As far as the program, I mean, preparing a, a bit of curriculum, just just a more refined, just refined daily plan, and with with like an hour by hour schedule, like really, because uh, it's like it's made of little chunks of education modules. So we we get this structured, well structured, and um, uh, even even to the point like if you want to do this on a regular basis as a as a revenue stream than literally an operations manual for how to run these things which would emerge from this but uh, that's the level where we'd like to get this to um, for the okay. operations of an event hmm. like this so what else did I miss here what's the what's the minimum number of people students builders whatever you need to execute well um, to execute and to to have like net revenue for our time, it's like probably a number that comes up would be like twenty four. Yeah. Otherwise, it's like at what price structure? I mean, before we had uh, for the two weeks we charged twenty four hundred bucks, um, <clears throat> but that would be that would be significant at that point. We can cover our costs and cover instructor instructor time. Like I, I would need to find some instructors. I, I need to, uh, like, probably like two assistants, two assistant instructors. And what's the shortest amount of time you could accomplish a Canon Club build? <laughs> uh, in, w- while getting twenty-four people to show up. Um, what is the minimum time? Um, I mean, two months, if that's all we did. 
to prepare for a, a good event. Uh, to oh us. no 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 no! I meant I meant what I meant once they're on site. What's the what's the minimum oh. length of the of the building no, teardown? Do, no, we could do seven days. That would be a really good like a week week course. That would be like people would have plenty of energy. It would be exciting. One week you can get a lot out of it. We can still build the whole house in that time. Um, at which I would say one week, forty-eight people. Uh, if you do one week, twenty-four people, it it gets more tiring. Okay. That's the reality. So would you say you would say you need at least you need the equivalent of uh, four, twenty-four people per week, roughly. Yeah, people like if the 24 people were actually working, then yeah, the 24 would be enough. Um, it or, or a different way to say that actually is probably two weeks. If, if you have 24 people, you need two weeks. If you have 40, yeah. you can do it in one. Yeah. Okay. Um, two weeks per 24 attendees. Mm -hmm, okay. Mm -hmm. And from the. Um, From the attendees, attendees and students' perspective, what are they getting out of it? Getting a good overview of a complete build process, including foundation. Well, actually, let's stop. Stop at the last one. We actually poured a foundation during the two weeks, which was, I think, cool. We can start since we're going to run out of foundation space. We probably say no. It's without a foundation. We reuse a foundation that we already have. Um, so they wouldn't get that part, but you get everything from the, the rough car carpentry, electrical, plumbing, interior finishing, kitchen, kitchen, bathroom, roof, carport, the whole, whole thing coming together. Um, I guess minus the landscaping at the end, because we're gonna, we're gonna landscape this uh, unless we. We could, if we get some mold, like trees and pots or things like that. Uh, yeah, not really. Are, are they going to be? Are they going to learn uh, in anything industry standards, like learning how to read the plans? Um, yeah. So, is there so any that, design involved? Ideally, that would be the case where we're teaching people how do you design a house, so that's conceptual. Uh, I would like to teach how do you actually do that using our modules within FreeCAD and Sweet Home 3D. There's, of course, okay, so now here's how you read all the blueprints and design principles. Like, yeah, we, in a well refined program that is really worth your time, yeah, yeah, all of that would be included. Um, now, then the curriculum, it's like, so then you'd get this whole manual, how do you design and build. Um, that would require a little more work to organize all that material um, into a really cohesive structure that doesn't overload people, provides the needed right. diversity. Yeah. That, that's something, as long as you have a mechanism at the end to capture the knowledge given in every each course, that is a, a living document that gets refined over time, right? That is, and but the reality of that is, you know, a person comes here and we show them, oh, okay, here's what we did last time and this and that, and you show them a bunch of assets and very quickly it's TMI, I want to go out and build. I mean, that's okay. the challenge that's of fine. the I mean, refinement challenge. It, I, I think I think the the attracting the people who want entertainment, who buy into the OSC vision, is a function of successful iterate. Like we're iterating up to that. I think. Yeah. So initially, you sell you sell this as show up. You're going to build a house from start to finish. It'll be fun. It'll be a community yeah. building event, and that's it. Like you're not fun. making any grand promises. Yeah. Make friends. Do something you never Make think you could. 
kind of what we're using a copy already and that, and that that worked for the 20, 2016 build for some people it's like i met main thing is i met a lot of cool people you know that mm -hmm. was the main outcome got it perfect okay um amazing so <clears throat> Uh, so I'm just going through this. Um, you need at least two instructors, so that so for 48 people, well, let's let's stick with 24, just because I think it's it's more realistic. Okay, mm -hmm. 24 people me, and there's three. There's you at the top. There's two people working under you to help manage. So what that means is that each of those two people would essentially be have a span of control of roughly 12. Yeah, which seems seems kind of high. Uh, it's definitely doable. And maybe. I think if that's the case, then yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe. I mean, for the quality of the experience, you want that ratio to be up. I mean, you'd, you'd want like four different teaching activities and four people on those groups. I mean, I think for quality, it's like you want a really quality event, probably like four people with groups of like one to six ratio, where then one person can really teach a, a smaller group. Um, in a more intimate setting as opposed to like you know not enough of me and and people might be lost here and there so that's i mean at four i mean for learning real technical okay. skills that would probably help it's just in whole safety a tool use all that um what kind of qualifications would you need them to have those four people or do you already have individuals in mind no, don't have specific individuals, but they would have to be basically builders. Builders who are also teachers. Okay. Would they have to know anything specific about the OSC modular system, or would you bring them in a couple days ahead and be like, this is how we're going to do this? Uh, you'd want to have give them a boot camp and crash course on how we do this. I mean, ideally they would be familiar with it already. Uh, there's a person in mind or two that that come into mind from former workshops, people who are actually builders. Uh, but idea they would be familiar, otherwise you have to catch them up to it. People who are open-minded to learning, of course, yeah. Um, Do you have a way to reach back to people who have done this before, who you, who you could envision in this role, that if you were to offer them some amount of money, they would come and do it? Yeah, we have all the lists of people who attended before, so we can pull that up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Where I'm going with this is um, I can apply for up to $15,000 for a no-interest loan. $15,000 spread across four people to fund the instructor piece because I think that's going to be a limiting factor. To get the first program through, if we can get 24 attendees, I would pay back that loan using revenue from the loan. Or I mean revenue from the attendees. Does that mm -hmm. seem feasible? That's feasible. Okay. I mean for at the stage that we're at. Okay. Um I'm gonna add another text box. Let's do But why do you necessarily do that as opposed to say uh the funding for that comes directly from the revenue like why also invoke the loan is there a particular uh logistics oh, time, time in other words yeah to, to me it's, a, tell it's me more. a sequence issue because we want to establish the cadre uh in other words train the trainer mm -hmm. before we execute and in order to do that you have to you need something to jumpstart that process which is like hey look i've got the cash to pay you if you show up and commit to a two-week thing, or th you know three, including the week-long boot camp or a refresher or whatever it is, then you've established your cadre, which means that you your program is becoming more real. So that when you actually send out the application to people to say like, mm -hmm. you know, we want you to come pay us to do this, you have something to show for it in a way. It's like I, we we've got everything's in place. This is a real thing. It's happening. As opposed to the possibility of canceling the event, if not people. As opposed to, well, as opposed to saying, "Hey, we need tw we're looking for twenty four people to sign up for this thing." Have twenty four people show sign up, but not have the instructors yet. 
And uh, in other words, I'm I'm betting that it's harder to get the instructors in place than it is to get the applicants to do this. Really? Uh, th this is not based on my experience with OSC. This is simply based on my experience planning training. What kind of plan? Like I want to. I want to. Yeah. Go ahead. What kind of training have, does this experience come from? Oh, being a company commander in the military. Where Where did you have to recruit your people? Like, can you give me an example that shows me more? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's say I'm planning a, a live fire exercise in which my soldiers are going to maneuver through a range and shoot down targets, and while friendly move units are moving next to each other. It's a really complex thing. One of the first steps you do, like you know, you recon the training site, you um, develop the, all the, the planning and timeline and make sure everything's safe. You also have to train the trainers because you're gonna need people on the ground that are your trusted agents that know the, the constraints of the range to help manage the soldiers who are moving through this process in a safe in a safe manner. And so training the trainer means in advance of actually executing the training, you take them out to the range, you say this is how we're gonna run it, this is what your responsibility is as the trainer, and this is how you're going to instruct them and what you're gonna instruct them in. And you know, then and only then can you proceed to the dry fire where everyone's just walking through, no, no their weapons aren't loaded, all and pro progressing up to weapons are hot, Targets are up. Execute. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, just explain. I, this. I don't want to get too far into. Yeah, I don't want to get too far in the weeds here. The, the bottom line is that's an option to fund, to incentivize instructors to come back, so that you can you can train them um, to help you make the the actual event smooth. But is but if we assume that the event is going to go through, right? Why can't we just say, no, we'll pay you that anyway. We're just going to take that out of the, the proceeds. Like, what is the difference there when we position that to the instructor? It's, it's a matter of timing. You know, if, if, you're, if you're confident that you can get, um, that that's going to happen, that's fine. I mean, I, I'm, I'm envisioning that... Um, the, 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 the distance between when somebody signs up and when they send you money uh, isn't going to overlap from with the time that you need to prepare the trainers to run this program for you. That's you're saying, so for the trainers, you're assuming that we're going to be paying them up front or like half and half or? O only because you mentioned like a refresher or boot camp or some type of process to bring them up to speed. Because they, they would arrive in advance of the students. That's all. I mean, if you have the cash in the bank to pay them up front and then just pay yourself back, that's another option. I was just throwing it out there as like a way to grease the wheels of actually bringing them out on site in advance of this, in mm -hmm. advance of, of students showing up and handing you their credit cards. Yeah, because typically the, the way the signups happen are online through things like Eventzilla or Eventbrite, that kind of a thing. So it, typically it's okay. up front. Cool. So well, then may, you, the, yeah, you, you, maybe you don't need it. Yeah. Maybe if you don't need, need it, it we could do it. I'm not, sh not sure like how the workflow, if there's a compelling reason to do it, we could. Um, so, so these, these are, are the two options. options. Okay. But, but the bottom line is part of developing this, this, uh, this event is going to be making sure your instructors are prepared and aware of the plan. Yeah, that's all. And, and you're seeing what, like, a couple of days advance of the program. Yeah, you you're a better judge of that than I am. Yeah. If you reach back to people who have done it before, maybe the timeline's shorter. If you're trying to bring builders off the street who have habits and think they know how everything is done, then you may need longer. Yeah, that, that that's actually the main, the main challenge there. Like, like psychologically speaking, uh, it it can be. In, we were kind of talking about this yesterday here. It's probably uh, going to have to be less five or less years in uh, in a profession, because yeah. otherwise they <laughs> they get too stuck. No, the, the, I mean think about it psychologically. If you invest your whole life 
into a way of doing things and now we say oh no actually you've been doing it wrong your whole life it's a real psychological pain that very few people are going to want to go through so or like just or just to know well the implication there is that it's not that you have been doing things wrong your whole life but the implication in the psychology of it is that and that so that's what Katrina was ta we're talking about that yesterday and, and it's just the psychology that like why we're not going to get like a 60 year old builder to ever want to shift that because of the psychological trauma right there, there's another option which yeah. is you don't get builders you get sergeants from the army and i put out an application and i say we're looking for four uh non yeah, officers like who are leaving the military and we're going to pay you you know, a thousand bucks for a week's worth of uh, training, and then you're going to be in charge of a team of students for this two-week thing. So in total, you're going to get three weeks worth of time that you're dedicating to this. We're going to pay you some amount of money, and your responsibility is going to be, you know, essentially just managing. You're, mm -hmm. you're going to be a taskmaster. Mm -hmm. um, the the pro of that is I think it'd be a great program for vets and they don't have to pay and they can show up and learn it'll be exciting and developmental for them. The con is that you you would just be limited in their capability to teach the OSC method, and so yeah. you'd be relying them more on task management than you know you know and then you and then you you're carrying more of a burden in terms of like this is a different type of of building process and this is how OSC does it and. You're just managing your four people instead of 24 or 48. Yeah, with the pre-training, uh, we can, I think, accomplish a lot. Just, you know, building a sample modular, doing some sample things. As long as you're just a little bit ahead of the the, pop the rest of the population, you still can look like a pro because uh, the things are supposed to be quite simple. No, I, I kind of like right. that. It's more the taskmaster kind of a thing where it's like, okay, let's do this because... A lot of this is that it may be so foreign, like people will certainly have questions It may be like different than whatever they heard and stuff like that. So open-minded people are great, but I mean, if someone's just got prejudice and comes to it with judgment as opposed to curiosity, then it's, uh, it can be an issue. But so in which case say like the taskmaster role is more, more appropriate. It's like, Hey, this is just what we do. And, and then I'll see the results, you know? Mm -hmm. My my recommendation would be to um, make the funnel as wide as possible, so you can reach back to previous attendees and you know s socialize this idea, and see if you have any interest. Simultaneously, mm -hmm. I can do the same yeah. in the veteran community. Um, I think before we do that, we yeah. should come up with a, a rough timeline, though. Mm -hmm. When do we want to do the first? You're saying what's the D day? Yeah, how how much time do you want to build in to prepare, and how and when would you want to hit the ground running? And what makes sense from like a weather perspective as well? Because January in Missouri is gonna fucking no. suck. I mean, from weather perspective, if we're gonna do it here, it's it's like April one, be earliest, okay. and it depends on weather because it might be raining. Um, in which case. Like May one would be less risk on the weather front. Um, not sure if like April one versus May one, like the probability of rains is any different. Um, but you want to be outside of March, like beyond March, where after March okay. it starts warming up. If you say, let's take a look at just for reality check weather. Um, take a look at uh, this is what we've got around Kansas City if you look at the chat what no that didn't do it let's see no oh uh, here no take a look at the second link here's a better one you know That's what's interesting is this we're almost following exactly the same process you would have to do to plan a military operation. This is. So like one of the short. You know, one of the things you, you do your timeline is to follow this thing called Hope W, 
which is your hires timeline, your operational timeline, your planning timeline, your execution time or your enemy timeline, and then weather. So like you're you're seeing on one calendar like all of the different things yeah. and deconflicting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. So we're looking at let's see. Like temperature. February, March. Yeah. So Mar the bottom bottom one is March. Well, actually, according to this, April is less likely to rain than May. Um, and March is even less. Yeah, but it's going to be colder. Like, you want it to be... Um, yeah, April 1st is... Typically, last spring frost occurs by April 20 and April 10. Yeah, so like, Northern is April 20 for last frost. So let, let's just, for argument's sake, let's just say May 1st. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a realistic thing. So, you know, the implied mm -hmm. task there is between now and May 1st, which isn't as much time as we'd like to think. Um, right. We need to develop the curriculum, and I'm, I'm going to... Uh, for this, so we develop curriculum. Um, develop, you know, we need a logistics plan. What page are you on? We need a marketing two. plan. Okay, yep. Yeah. Um, we need to identify and select cadre. Um, uh, Actually, I'll change marketing plan to like we need to pick twenty four people. Well, you know what? For like, because we're not, we're gonna be on a foundation. It could actually be either April one or May one, with respect to the weather starting to shape up. Because actually, we would run like the build would happen inside the workshop for a lot of it. So it's not. Yeah, yeah, it's um. I was kind of thinking in a mindset of we're trudging in the mud and stuff, but no, this is not mud. This is going to be on paved ground because the foundation is already paved. We have this area that's already paved, as you you will see. Um, but anyway, uh, I'm just saying. So it could it could be earlier, is what you're saying? Yeah, April first or May first. Um, yeah. But we should uh, we should. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's put that. In. Next time we'll we'll just pick one, one or the other. We can refine that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. We also need to um, pick twenty four people. You mean recruit? The, yeah. Or, I mean, they're going to be paying you, right? Yeah. So it's going to be, you know, we need to create an application. I'm guessing. Or do you already have that? A simple online online stuff through our website um, that would be the standard registration forms okay uh, what about video like a promo vi promo video <clears throat> promo video I mean we I do have a lot of footage it's good including like last night uh, capture all done time lapse so we could actually cut together a pretty decent well, we've got all the stuff from the summer everything going up and going down so okay um with real with some decent cameras okay i i think um given everything that we're talking about here the promo video editing down that footage into a promo video i think is a good way to use your time um before we start thinking about the application and, and finding a cadre or anything, because that's going to be the thing that captures people's attention. Yeah. And 
and it's it's a it's less of a physical lift for you. Oh yeah, man. What I could do, I, I mean, I could try do doing a partial outsource of this thing. Like, I would have to do the script and prepare all the assets, but that's the kind of stuff I do already because I use a lot of that stuff for learning and review and going through the plays. Um, so if we have well organized footage, we can. It's almost a, an almost an automated process that deeds yields that video, uh, pending some really okay. skilled people. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, I, I can organize the video and uh, work on that. Yeah. Um, okay. So I th it, I think we accomplished a lot today. Um, do you want to keep this Wednesday weekly thing? Yeah, we do. Uh, can we maybe do it? <laughs> more like uh, the evening time like 6 does that work for you 6 central or is that too late um, I think with, it, with it, enough advance notice I can make it work so so next Wednesday at 6 central yeah okay that will be cool yeah um, and then so how often are we going to run these things what do you see like as the picture so here's we got this builder crash course reinforcing the fact that we're actually building, starting to build for clients and stuff like that. But what do you see as the cadence? Well, I think you need to do two or three of these. Uh, I think the first one is going to be informative um, for you on how free, how quick the turnaround can be. Because the limiting factor from where I sit is going to be participation. Um, after the first one, you're going to want some time, probably a couple weeks, to do an after action review, to capture all of, you know, edit down the footage that you took from that thing, collect testimonials so that we can refine the process for the second one, and then open up the application process again. Maybe we do that simultaneously so that there's not to reduce the lag time. But I, you know, I think realistically, you're going to have to do a couple of these before we move on to um, clients coming to you and saying, like, I want this. Because that's in addition to we, we're going to have by that time, we'll have our house here that's ready for tours and the brochure and website probably. Yeah, yeah, and I, and that's another great way to spend your time in the winter, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As we do all of that. <laughs> it's really <laughs> working out the workflows, just workflows, refining, optimizing, build procedures, tooling, and all of that. Um, I mean, the other thing is there's we haven't done it yet, but I, I want to build this this new workshop dedicated to the modules production, your little micro factory. Um, it's doable on a it's potentially by like April man if we're actually cranking these out we we do need it for efficiency I mean uh, yeah for efficient that, like yeah. right now we're, we're a little tight in the shop and it's a it's our heavy machines workshop so it's like we're switching between carpentry and heavy machines we got to separate that <laughs> mm -hmm. okay so I'm, I'm just adding build workshop for CD go home like that's something that we should complete I mean, do you think it's realistic to complete that before the first one in, in the spring? It depends what you mean by realistic. <laughs> and I guess that's a... No, I mean, it's a question of, of how much emphasis we put on that. We, I think we have the budget for it. It would be part of a budget to actually get production. Like for the apprenticeship, we, we would need that. Um, because right now it's the workshops really get gets out of hand when we're switching between the the two functions. Right now we just need more space, and to also ex do some of the things like overhead cranes or whatever, like easy way to move stuff around. Because this is largely about materials handling at the end of the day. Like in the model where you don't build on site, but say you prepare the modules inside the workshop, which is an effective way to do it. Um, we need a workshop like that. But I'll put it here. It's I think we we pretty much got to do it. Um, uh, what page? 
Uh, slide two. Yeah, I think we really got to get that workshop, in which case we're really... If I t tell you about the high revenue proje projections, that's part of the infrastructure that's needed for that. I mean, um, it will help. Well, right now we've got it as like a task to do before the first course, but it could also be something that you that you do in between courses. Like you generate some revenue be. first. Yeah. No, that's that's true. Um I have to really th get clear about what is the proper sequencing on that one. Because the priority right now is get the house finished um, so we can start tours and a website. And then as people are starting to show interest, we build capacity in terms of manufacturing. And we could use what we have right now. It'll be a little less efficient in terms of move having to move things around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, from my perspective, what I, what I think is going on here is you, you've you spent the past, what, 10 years? Hmm. How, long, how long have you been there? 10 years-ish? Since 2006. All right, so you've spent the past 15 years busting your ass, uh, getting your hands dirty. Mm -hmm. I think if you were to take the next couple months to capture as and package that experience, while we're planning for this first swarm build, that to me is is success. Like you you've been in the trenches, and now I think it's time to pull yourself out a little bit to get organized so that the first next event you have is refined relative to yeah. the previous time you did it. Yeah, it will be refined compared to the previous one, absolutely. And it's always a matter of like the first one in 2016. It was a different model, so so after that we had to pretty much redo everything, redo all the build instructions and all that. So it gets better every time. And I love sitting on ass. Uh, and I kind of do that in the winter uh, anyway. Except right now, uh, there's hands-on refinement I want to experience for the house because um, I'm the guy qualified to do it. Like we're being brutal in terms of the designing in the efficiency. And that's why I said between $25 and $100 per hour, that's the difference uh, that we're going to end up with. And then <clears throat> another 2x on top of that for what did I say? That's a pop quiz. Coordination. For what? Co co coordination. Coordination losses. Yes. Coordination losses. Because we're we're having did you, one. Did you just pop quiz me? I did. <laughs> did you like that? I'm with you, man. <laughs> yeah. Check on learning. You're man. You're picking up, man. Um, <laughs> no, I'm s serious. Like uh, you, you are. Uh, you remember what I said? That's good. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So that's good. It's good. I mean, I'm. I mean, man, the numbers. Like, whenever I, I get depressed, I just think about the numbers. <laughs> right. I say, oh, okay, no, that's actually it. Does make sense. So, um, before I let you go, uh, I'm gonna send an email to coordinate a, a short call with my buddy Dave. Um, I'm guessing evenings probably work best for you. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to be there? So we're we're on board for the open source part already. That's been vetted. Yes, I, I mean he's. Um, I think I think he needs to learn more of what that means in practice. But I think we've crossed the first barrier, which is he knows what you're about, and he's far away from actually executing. And so I think the next step is a conversation so that you can both get on the same page. Okay. Yeah. Why don't you? Um, I'll take it. Um, just uh, connect us. I will. I'll take it from okay. there. Just us. Um, yeah, connect us, and we'll take it from there. Okay. Cool. Do you want me to be there or no? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that would be cool. Okay. Okay. Um, is is this a friend of yours great. through? Is it a friend of yours, or is this is some someone who? Just we're we're there? in the same support group. So so. Mm -hmm. Long story short, he's a um, he's a former Green Beret who, and he's also in the IDF who went into business and he's now at business school. 
So what's that? IDF? Uh, Israeli Defense Force. Okay. Um, but then came to America and uh, joined the military, and um, and so uh, we we met through a mutual friend and have since gotten closer through a support group that we're a part of. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, so between now and next week, is there any one of these that you want me to focus focus on specifically? Like, would it be helpful to clean this up, this document up, and in, into something more coherent? Um, yeah, a Gantt chart. Like, put it put it on a on a timeline, on a visual timeline. Okay. Um, okay. Let me send you a template. Is it two T's or two N's? I always forget. T, I T, two T's. double T. Cool. Uh, so okay, here's, that. for example, um, let's see, is that editable? Yeah, you can, you can edit, copy and paste the page out of that. It's just, if you want to use that, I, I've got that. It's got the, it's it's live editable. That's the thing. Like, because as soon as the rubber hits the road, you you copy a page and make new changes to it. That's what I do. I because things change every time you learn something, so you move shift things around. So it's an editable doc. Yeah. Got it. Um, Otherwise, um. Change Wednesday, 6 p.m. is good Good for me. Okay. Um, I just sent you a, a Zoom invite, invite for next Wednesday, mm -hmm. 6 p.m. Central. Um, and do, for the phone call with Dave, though, is there a time that you are you want to propose or do you want to just work it out? Yeah, can, it can out? we try it? Uh, can we just do the evening thing at 6 p.m. on another day? Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, it yeah. doesn't have to be Wednesday. No, because because that's us, right? Unless you want. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, cool. So another day on the cool six p.m. All right, I'll let him know. Yeah. Um, and so Steve also said just just one thing um, to step it up a notch and based on a record of teaching this. Like I think, I think the big issue here is regarding teaching is just the scope and that we're trying to do design at the same time that we're trying to do build and too many things at one time but steve did uh -huh. say that uh you need a person who's a killer in education who knows how to do curriculum who can make things complete like a person who who is called like oh that was the best teacher i had and um okay. either i build up my skills for that or find other people that do that like just in a evolution of this program here i mean i think I should be learning the skills, or if, if I don't have them brush up on the things that are required to make it a very compelling experience, which is the case when I do my generalized talks. People, you know, people are are inspired by it. When it comes down to technical, the rubber hits the road stuff. That's when people tune out, you know. But I think getting the rubber hits the road stuff to the same level that the visionary stuff is at. That's kind of a that's an idea. So do you see the excellent teacher as being at the visionary level or at the rubber meets the road level? Um, well, if I'm that person, that would be the visionary plus teacher, I think, because this is about changing culture. So I think that person has to be, um, it seems like they have to be the visionary and the teacher. Seems like it. Because okay. otherwise if you're a teacher and you don't have the huge thing, you're not as, as effective as a teacher. I think, because because the central premise here is we're we're creating an institution that works explicitly on solving pressing world issues, and to do that, you got to inspire people to do that, because nobody wants to change change the world. <laughs> I think the farther I go, it's like there's few people, not a lot of people that, uh, in my view, I mean, what's your opinion on that topic? Like, there's a lot of people that talk about real solutions, but when it comes down to it, you you provide real solutions to somebody, and they don't want to do it. What's your, what's your take I don't on know that? that I, yeah, I mean, my, my initial reaction is talk is cheap, and so 
you don't have to risk anything by having a grand vision and plan. You have to risk something to do what you've done for the past 15 years. Um, and the truly valuable people in society are the ones who can get their hands dirty on top of having a grand vision or in pursuit of a grand vision. And yeah. I think that society already values them at a premium and they're hard to come by. And um, I think part of the value of what you're doing is you're actually making that identity more accessible. So you're That's part of what you're doing, I think mm -hmm. is valuable is you're, you're proving to people, you're empowering them to say that if they have a vision, they can become the person that, to affect change in the real world. And, um, yeah, that, that, that's my initial thought there. Um, yeah. So I, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Does that, does that resonate at all? Yeah, yeah, it does. That, that makes a lot of sense. That's right. It's this like, is also a bigger conversation. I could pontificate it, for hours on this probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bigger conversation. We'll talk about it when, when you visit here. You think that any use from the DOL? No, I I, I should reach out to them. Um, forget the DOL for a second. In November, is there a, is there a time, a date on the calendar that you think would be beneficial for me to come out? Yeah, definitely. Um, as soon as you can, like November. Okay. Ten. We could have the our conversation in person. Or you can go on a weekend if the fare is cheap. You can get some really good rates um, over the weekends. Um, what about the week of the 15th through the 19th? Any any availability in there? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, <clears throat> okay. yeah. Uh, so November, that's... You know, that's, um, so I have the, well, actually, so I do have the curriculum for the, the Summer X, so we're still in the workshop and building things like the torch table right now and things like that. Um, so that would be partly that in a shop. I can't cut out too much outside of after hours because we still got to do it, but the weekends are free. Like, I don't know, uh, is a weekend an okay. option t for you too? Maybe... Yeah, the the only constraints right now are I'm still waiting on potential travel to South Carolina that I haven't nailed down yet mm -hmm. uh, to do the follow-up video from Mac um, and childcare. And so I I threw out, I mean, really really between the 13th and the 20th, I think, are on the table, or 21st, mm -hmm. is a window I'm looking at right now. I just need to be able to coordinate childcare because my wife works and, um, and figure out exactly what that looks like. But practically speaking, like, if I showed up, I would participate mm -hmm. in your day. I'll, I'll pick up trash, like whatever you, whatever you need during the day to support, and then we can just hang out at night. Um, should I like bring a tent and? No, we got we got space. Like, in the be self-sufficient. Okay. No, Hablab's good right now. I mean, so five people here, and there's like ten rooms in there. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll start. I'll start looking at flights and see yeah. if I can nail down my my other travel um yeah that'd be great and before next week i'll have i'll have the gantt chart ready for you and yeah um yeah it was a good good next step yeah 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 i mean try i mean start let's just i mean i think this this thing the the cd home crash course i'm pretty sure it's going to stick around i mean because we got to be teaching people like this very fundamental skill so Gantt chart and let's start the operations manual like like think of this as okay here's our operations for that i mean as long as we're we have a high chance of that sticking around just start a start an ops manual and start filling it because thinking about it in the sense that we do it but then we teach others to do it as well like once once our programs we start training builders um they can offer these crash courses too in their locations yeah. elsewhere too yeah right so let's let's get um, okay. yeah, let's get if, yeah. If you want to do that, just let's start a, a document that's our operations manual for that, and again, chart is part of it. But I mean, the, the working doc right now, yeah, we keep keep evolving that, we keep going. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm just gonna make sure I capture this real quick. Tasks, slide two. 
operations manual. Yeah, operations manual for, for this event, because I do see a good chance of this sticking around. Like something that's a product that we actually run on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah, we, we don't have that yet. We, we don't have anything that is super regular right now, like, you know, monthly, quarterly. We, we did talk about the quarterly crash course on the house. So, yeah, that'd be good. Fantastic. Okay, cool. All right, John. Well, Good thanks. Mm -hmm. Yep. Later. Yeah, later.